Hey guys, Cream Crazy here. Welcome to another update because I can. Anyway, as you know, it's December. Everyone's happy. We've only got 24 days till Christmas. Everyone's happy and excited. But you see, here's more pressing matters at hand. You see, it is December. I've only got, what, 16 days until the Wrestling Rant Award nominations get announced. And I wanted to... Give you guys a little heads up, not just to remind you that that's when you can stop reminding me of good moments I've missed this year to put in my nominations, if there are any more, and also to announce what these awards are, because to be all, on all fairness, they have changed a little bit since last year. I had 26 awards this year. I've had around 30-something last year. I think I had around 36 of them, in fact, to be exact. Um, some of them I've taken out and aren't there anymore, like commentator of the year and worst commentator of the year, even though it's changed a lot this year, I really don't want to do that award again, because in all fairness, I think we know who's lost it. Then again, there are some new ones I put in as well, because why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I take awards out if I wanted to put more in? Okay, there might be less, but still. Anyway, here are the awards that I have kept for this year. Worst non-wrestler of the year. Worst character slash gimmick shift of the year. Worst moment of the year. Worst pay-per-view match of the year. Worst feud of the year. Worst pay-per-view of the year. Worst diva of the year. Worst wrestler of the year. They're all the negative ones. Rising, the Rising Star Award. The Rufflecopter Award. El Stupido Award. Non-wrestler of the year award. Best character gimmick, gimmick shift of the year. Moment of the year. Pay-per-view match of the year, feud of the year, pay-per-view of the year, diva of the year, and finally, wrestler of the year. They're the ones I've kept, if you could keep up with me. I don't want to repeat myself. <laughs> Just rewatch it again, you'll see. The fact is, the ones I've added, I feel are pretty damn good. And I'll describe at the moment, because I have to, what these mean. Because some of them might be a little bit... <sighs> I don't know, just complex in their meaning. You, they may not be. It all depends how well you are, good you are at processing things. Anyway, first up are the, com the combi, which will be done separately, of Worst Talker and Talker of the Year. Of course, noting of which ones produced the worst and the best mic segments. That's the only new dual one I've actually added. I think, yes, it is. The only dual one I've added of worst and best. So, that's all good. Wrestling Meme of the Year. Basically a mannerism that's caught on with WWE fans online or in person. I think we know who's won this one. I only have one nomination, and to be honest, you know which one it is. I think you can tell which one's won that. The IWC's Most Hated Award, which you, people, will be voting on. That's right, this is your award. This is the IWC's award. So yeah... When I put the poll up, please vote for it. And this is for the wrestling personality who has received the most abuse from the IWC for a specific issue. No, do note I said specific. I note down, I looked over the internet over the course of the year, and I look at which, which person has received a lot of abuse from the fans online. The smarks among us. And basically, I, I've got one specific criterion for this. John Cena is exempt. Seriously, I do not want John Cena winning this award just because he gets flaming from so many people, okay? He, there's, okay, there may be specific reasons why John Cena would bloody well get nominated for this, but he'd win anyway. So, no John Cena in this award, hands down. The British Indie Match of the Year. Now, you may be saying to me at this point, Fred, you only went to three indie shows this year, how the fuck could you pick a Match of the Year? To be honest with you, I went to three. Therefore, I have three matches up for this award. Simple, really, isn't it? I mean, obviously, because of university, I couldn't go to chapter four and, and four and five of progress. So, oh, no, three, four, and five, I won't be able to go to. Because five is next fucking year. I won't be able to go to that either. You see, I would go to more indie shows. There's just a none down here in Cornwall. I mean, I thought New Key Cornwall would have a wrestling show with Tajiri in it. Turns out it was New Key Cambridge. That's right, Cambridge. Fuck you for getting my hopes up. Anyway, back to this. Theme and promotional song of the year. The best song that was picked for an event 
or show that represents the show and or the matches within it well, along with genu generating a genuine reaction to me wanting to watch and or buy it. Because you know how interesting uh, good music is to me in regards to wrestling. You know how a song can come up and go, ooh, that's interesting. I may want to check this show out because the show's got me pumped. You know what I mean? It's like how My Way gets us excited for WrestleMania X7 every time we pop the bloody DVD in. We want to be excited for it, you know? And that's what these songs are for. So yeah, I picked that. And finally, this one, which I think will get a lot of people talking. The In The News Story of the Year. The biggest news story related to professional wrestling, which got the wrestling or mainstream world talking. Now this one's going to be quite controversial, because I bet a lot of you will be saying to my face right now, Oh, this story is obviously the best the biggest story, but then someone else could say, huh, this is the biggest. But then again, it's all down to me in the end. What I judge as a big story may not be the same as you judging it a big story. But, uh, yeah, let's see what happens, eh? And guys, they are the awards. They are the award nomination, award categories where nominations will be put in sometime between the 17th and the 24th of December, because I will announce the nominations on the 24th Christmas Eve, where you'll only have a week to nominate, to vote for your IWC's most hated winner. Because honestly, you're only going to have a week. I'm saying you now, when from Christmas Eve to New Year's Day, you're going to only have that one week. So, yeah, when I put the poll up, you better get voting. <laughs> so yeah, 26 awards. I think I already know what, two or three of these awards and who's going to win them already, because I have a long list already planned out. So, what's going to happen? Who's going to win what? And please, I must note, I am a WWE watcher. I only put down TNA stories if, in all fairness, they matter. Uh, to be honest with you, that's why the only t major TNA stories I've got down for awards are from the In The News one, with Vince Russo getting fired, and for Austin Arias winning, winning the championship. So, they're the only two TNA things I have down. So please, I'm a WWE watcher, do not flame me with any bullshit criticism that I do not deserve, okay? I'm a WWE reviewer. Do not throw it back at me just for that. I am. I watch TNA occasionally, not all the time. So yeah, 26 awards there, guys. Hope you like these categories. I'm sorry for Jason MUFC, M MUFC WWE for not putting in a best or worst job reward, but to be honest with you, there isn't really a point. Because Heath Slater would win every single fucking year for worst. And to be honest, I wouldn't know who'd win a best jobber award. Because you can't rip... Jobber's got such a negative stigma to it, you couldn't even pick a best. Seriously. I mean, probably you'd say Tyson Kidd, but I wouldn't even want to pick one of those. <laughs> My opinion, anyway. Guys, I've been Cream Crazy. You've been people watching. This has been a... Wrestling Rants Awards 2012 Award Cratic Category Announcement bit. And I will see you whenever next time may be. Cheers.